Yeah, welcome everybody from my side about the environmental risk assessment in the sewage treatment plant uh, on tier A and B in phase two. Um, so why do we need a uh, um, risk assessment in the sewage treatment plant? Because it's not something of the real environment you think about when we are talking about an environmental risk assessment, but it is really important that the functioning of an environmental risk uh, of a sewage treatment plant um, is, uh, yeah, is, is, is not inhibited from any substance. So um, the one of the most important cleaning steps during sewage treatment is the biological treatment. And um, therefore, it is a central point for the functionality of uh, a sewage treatment plant. And the sewage sludge is uh, very important here. And sewage sludge consists of different bacterial strains and several microorganisms. So it's a community working to clean our organic waste in the, uh, in the water. So that means specifically substances with an and antimicrobial mode of action might inhibit the functionality of the sewage and uh, yeah, the functioning of the whole process. So we want to check it if uh, there could be any, yeah, yeah any, anything, any inhibition. Yeah, the PEC calculation for this risk assessment is really easy. You just have to delete the dilution factor here from the PEC surface water because you have no dilution in the sewage treatment plant. And what you simply do is that you have to multiply then the PEC for surface water by a factor of 10. And then you have the PEC for sewage treatment plant for your risk assessment. Oh, sorry, a little bit too fast. For the PNEC derivation, you need the results of an OECD 309. This is the activated sludge respiration inhibition test. And in this test, you determine the effects of a substance on microorganisms from activated sludge by measuring their respiration rate under defined conditions in the presence of different concentrations of the test substance. The, simple, uh, the principle is very simple. You just uh, compare the respiration rates of your control with your respiration rates of, um, of, the, uh, of the vessels uh, um, um, with your active substance and this within the contact time of three hours. And um, this test is typically used to determine the ECX values. So what we need is the EC10. And, uh, and or also it is possible to derive a no observed effect concentration, a NOAC value for this. As assessor, you have to check the validity crit criteria and if reproducibility is given in the test. So, there should be not less than 20 milligram oxygen per gram activated sludge and hour in the blank controls. And there should be not more than 30% variation in the co variation coefficient between the control replicates. And you have a reference substance for the EC50. This is normally the dichlorophenol. And there, the EC50 should not should be between two and twenty-five milligram per liter for total respiration. So at the end, you have the results on the specific oxygen consumption of the blank controls. You have all measured data, the inhibition curves, and the method of calculation for the EC10 or for the NOAC value. And you have the results on total and, if appropriate, heterotrophic and nitrification in respiration inhibition. It is good to know when we, uh, when we test pharmaceuticals that normally a limit test is sufficient because there are not very often effects found in this test. So um, 
it, it's it's shorter and it's easier to just have this limit test. And um, it is also normally sufficient to measure the effect on total respiration only and not on nitrification respiration. This is, yes, this is also very complex and, and complicated, so normally total respiration uh, should be uh, sufficient. You have to control if really poorly water-soluble substances they have to be weighed directly into the test vessel, and there should be no uh, stock solution above the maximum water solubility. So because then you no, do not know the exact concentration in your test vessels. And all, or also ultrasonification should be avoided in this test. That means that ultrasonification could change the substance itself. So then you need uh, additional analysis to verify if the substance concentration is really met in your test. If there are any more questions about this test on OECD 209, there is also a Q&A uh, for this test um, available on the Uber website. You have the, um, um, the address uh, here. The risk assessment is as as it is also for, for surface water or for the other environmental media, that uh, RQ for microorganism is the PEC value divided by the PNEC value. And if this quotient is equal or above one, you have to go to tier B of the assessment. And here you have the same options as you have uh, for surface water. That means you can refine your um, your um, your PEC value, for example, for hum for metabolism in humans, as it was shown by Arne, and you can use the PEC aeration tank tank from Simple Treat instead of the PEC sewage treatment plant for the risk quotient. So that was it, and thank you very much for your attention.